Hi guys, Ed Haynes here to talk to you about the very last workout, the 2016 Open. Um, it is a repeat. Uh, initial thoughts, uh, a bit boring. Um, thought it was a bit of a waste. You've got three big, big dogs there uh, demonstrating the workout. Thought it was a bit of an anti-climax, but at the same time a great workout because it's one that a lot of us can do. Uh, we don't have to scale. So, first things first, as always, to RX or not to RX. Uh, now, obviously, uh, this workout is done for time, there's no time cap. But we do have to put our, uh, our coaching hats on and think about the format of the classes. Uh, hopefully, there'll be no one um, trumping Mr. Chow's time last year, of, uh, two years ago, sorry, 50 plus minutes. But we, we shall see. So what I'm going to say is, firstly, whilst I think everyone can thrust to that weight, most people can, I want to know if you can thrust that, that weight for 10 unbroken reps, and that's if you were fresh. Uh, that doesn't mean that I want everyone to go 10 unbroken reps in a workout, but I assume if you can do 10 unbroken reps of that RX load, um, that getting through a set of 21 with a smart breaking strategy is going to be very manageable, and we're still going to finish within a decent time. Uh, I think tomorrow we're going to be putting a 30 minute time cap on it, but I'll leave that to our coaches, Andy Brat Sanos and Belinda Halker, uh, to decide. Uh, next one, let's come to limitations. Uh, not too much to talk about here because really it's just two movements. Uh, and the beauty or the horrible thing about these two movements is that they're very similar. Uh, so a burpee over the bar, which we actually did in the first week, and a thruster are both very much tricep, tricep and quad dominated. So this is going to come down to, for a lot of us, tricep and quad muscular endurance. Potentially the shoulders and the delts coming into it a little bit. That shoulders and delts will really depend upon how good your overhead position is. If you're somebody who struggles to lock the arms out in a good overhead position, then you're just going to have to be, you're going to be loaded a lot more when that bar goes over your head. If you're someone who can lock that bar in a good position overhead, then that becomes a resting position. So it's very case dependent. Um, but just understanding that they're two very similar movements. So whilst a thruster for you might feel good in its own, and a bar of a burpee might feel good in its own, combine the two and it's very, very different. You get a lot more localized muscle endurance. Uh, engine. This is going to really be determined by your braking strategy. Basically, if you break those thrusters up a lot, um, this is going to come down to CP battery, which is just basically a fancy way of saying strength endurance. Uh, if you're having minimal breaks in those thrusters and being fairly fast with those burpees, then it's going to come down to your engine. It's going to be much more aerobic. Uh, next, pacing strategy. Uh, first things first, I mean, have you done this workout before? Uh, and if you have done this workout before, great, because you can base your strategy today uh, on what you did previously. If we go off the assumption that we're fitter, stronger athletes than we were when we last tested it, which for some of you would have been two years ago in the 2014 Open, uh, but we also actually put this into a, a testing block about a year ago. So if you did that workout, get on to modify, have a look at your time, see if you made any notes on the strategy. Hope you did. Next one, um, bar facing burpees. Good thing is we've done this already. Uh, personally for me, I know that after doing 16.1, I changed up my bar facing burpee strategy in terms of my technique, so that really helped me today when I did my repeat. Um, we should know how the burpees feel, we should know about the technique, and we should have an idea about cycle speed. As we know, two movements, for most of us this workout is going to be between 12 to however many minutes, uh, just understanding that going fast out the gates is going to probably you know, play against you later on in the workout, so being smooth and consistent, just exactly the same as we were in a 16.1, which is a 20 minute workout, um, is gonna benefit you in this workout. Whilst it's very hard for me, as every week, to give you uh, a proposed strategy that will work for you, because it's so case dependent and we're all different athletes, something I thought was a really good way to think about this workout, is that when you work through your round of 21s and 18s, that should feel like 85%. When you get to your 15s and your 12s, that should feel like 90, 95%. And when you get to those 9s, 6s and 3s, for a lot of us, that's when it should feel like it's 95 to 100% when we're really putting the foot down. If it's the other way around here and you start those 21s and 18s by going way too deep in those thrusters, not breaking them up, going way too fast in your burpees and it feels like 100% at the start, you've gone way, way too hard and you've got a miserable remaining workout coming up for you. Uh, so, that's a really good way to think about it, see how your warm-up feels, have a strategy in place. Better to start slow than it is to start faster, better to finish fast than it is to finish slow. Uh, quick reminders and the warm-up. Uh, firstly, for those of you dropping the bar, uh, gents, those 10s are going to bounce a lot, so if we drop from overhead, 
Highly recommend catching or pushing that bar down immediately so it doesn't A, bounce into other people's lanes where it's dangerous, and B, bounce out your way so you're having to run after it to pick it up again or do your burpees. Uh, ladies, you'll be using fives on that bar. You know what I'm gonna say, please treat our plates with care. Uh, lots of them breaking already. Having said that, luckily for you, your bar's not gonna bounce, but uh, yeah, just, just treat them with love. Next one, with regards to mobility, I would highly recommend doing this this evening or tomorrow morning before you come in and do the workout. We wanna work on improving our overhead position, all right, because obviously that thrust has to finish overhead. Improving our front rack position, so really going, getting off the rhomboids in the back, external rotator, tricep and lat, to have a good position in that squat. Uh, obviously the squat, we wanna work to be as upright as possible at the bottom of that squat. So that's gonna mean getting after your ankles, getting after your adductors, getting those knees out, so we can sit and support that bar at the bottom. Uh, last one, your posterior chain, actually really important for burpees. Uh, when you pop up from the burpee, we shoot the hips up in the air, bring the feet in towards our feet. The more supple and mobile you are to the hamstrings, glute, lower back, the better position we can get into. In terms of your warm-up tomorrow, how it's going to work is coaches, uh, Coach Andy, uh, Andy Bratz and Coach Belinda Halpro are going to take you through a very quick whiteboard session. They're going to discuss the heats, and as always, it's going to be down to you guys to run your own warm-up. I would highly recommend, A, starting with a 5-10 to 10 minute general warm-up. Hopefully you've done your mobility work beforehand, so we get in, get on a rower, get on a salt bike, start spinning, increase tissue temperature, start breathing a little bit. After that, we're going to go into some thrust and bar-facing burpee technique, keep the volume low. I'd highly recommend doing something like 2-3 to three or 2-5 to five burpees, bar goes down, 2-3 to three or 2-5, to five, uh, uh, sorry, thrusters, then burpees, having a little rest. 30 to 60 seconds, do it one to two more times, you don't need to do a ton of them here because it's going to gas you out for the workout, but it's really important to do them so you're prepped. Once you've done that, because it's going to be a breathing workout and we don't want to go from zero to 100 when we say three, two, one, go, I'd highly recommend getting on something like an assault bike or getting on something in a rower and doing some quick 30 30. So 30 seconds, 85, 90% hard out, breathe, hop off, walk around, get back on it again. We want to produce a bit of lactate. Uh, in our tissues, especially the quads in the upper body, so it's not a massive surprise in the shock to the system when the workout starts. Uh, that's all from me, guys. Last week, great job. Thank you for tuning in, and good luck to everyone tomorrow.